So from what I learned last year, these are the native Irish Northern European cherry trees. This is their, they're about to bud. And this is their, they have their flowers are, I believe it's called umbels, kind of like lily of the valley, but they're on trees. So this is the Irish, only Irish native cherry blossom and tree. And uh, when they're really blooming, I'll come and film them as well. But you can see the markings. They're like spots on the bark. And I'll go over and show you the parent tree, which is right there. Sadly, when the big ash came, we had to take part of the, this huge ash tree down. Inside that are bats and bees and honeybees and things like that. And we had to take it down a good bit because it was getting dangerous. And when that came down, it hit that cherry tree. But I'll go over to that cherry tree and show you the bark. So this is the parent or mother cherry tree. You can see this here. And the bark, if you get in close, you can see this kind of raised texture or pimples that are across the bark. Let's see, can I get a better place? There. Okay, do you see those? Now this is what a native Northern European cherry tree looks like. I was confused as was another person. I didn't know what this tree was and somebody told me it was an almond tree and then I got another arborist in and he said no. This is a native Irish cherry tree. All other cherry trees come from descendants from Japanese cherry trees. Here we have holly and there's beech and elder as well. So where I was standing just now with the young blooms and young cherry trees was right there. I've also taken a whole series of cuttings of the native Irish cherry tree because I don't think anybody really has it. So hopefully my cuttings will take. But I want to show you what the non-native, which a lot of people think is the native, cherry tree bark looks like. And they're all from the hybridized or immigrant Japanese stock that came to Europe and England with plant hunters. Now, here you can see this is the bark of non-native Japanese hybridized cherry trees that are all over England and Ireland. They look like kissy lips, very pouty lips, and they go at angles across the bark. So this is one kind of cherry tree, and here's another. These are two different, there's many, many, many different kinds of cherry trees. This is another one. You can see that how different the bark is here, but it still has those kind of over bloated lips. So that's a second one. Now I'll bring you, these are two decorative cherry trees, two different ones, both planted by my grandfather uh, in the 1960s. I'll bring you to the edible cherry trees, which again are not native Irish, but you can see from the bark, they will be different. So this is one kind of cherry tree. And this is another kind of cherry tree. Let me see if I can, you can see also the way the scarring of the bark of the tree is very distinctive as being a cherry tree. So you can kind of see, this is an old cherry tree, but it still has those kind of fat kissy lip things. Um, let's see if I can get another place. Oh, here, yeah. So there, very distinctive. I'm gonna go show you other cherry trees now. This is another non-native 
planted by my grandfather, but from the Japanese cherry trees. You see, they have the sideways markings across them. And you can see here's some of the blossoms or the remnants of some of the blossoms of this particular cherry tree. And they have individual blossoms, unlike the Irish native, which the blossom is on a kind of length with like Lily of the Valley blossom. So this is from the ancient Japanese heritage, not the native Northern European. Now these are two more cherry trees. There's this one with this beautiful burgundy leaf. I'm very fond of this one. It's really, really beautiful. But you can see the flower is not an umbel. It's a, a, a blossom. You can see they all come from the same stem. So this is part of what the Japanese heritage is. So the, a lot of this is out, finished blooming, but you can see the blossom all originates from the twig, unlike the Irish native. So you can see this is another cherry tree. Both of these ones, this um, uh, burgundy leafed one and this one, they don't really bear fruit. But they again, their blossom is the Japanese variety, all coming from the twig and individual blossoms. So this is a beautiful, these are two beautiful little cherry trees that my grandfather planted together. So those are two more cherry trees. So he planted one, two, three. That was the one I just showed you. And then there's two more on the other side of this ash tree that I just showed you. So that's one, two, three, four, five different cherry trees, different variants of the Japanese heritage tree. So I'm now going to show you the eating cherry tree. So this is the eating cherry tree. And again, you can see all the blossoms are coming from the branch. So these will hopefully all be pollinated and bear fruit. But when we come to the trunk, you will see again, it has this sideways marking. This is all emblematic of the Japanese variant of the cherry tree. And it's in full lovely bloom. So hopefully we won't get a frost and the blooms will all turn into fruit, hopefully later this year. Look at that, beautiful blossoms. But you can see they all come from the branch. Each individual blossom comes from the branch. And that's the Japanese heritage of these trees. This cherry tree here, is a young one. It self sowed an, a few years ago, but again, you can see it's the sideways bark. And this tree's parent is that big tree there that I was just showing you. So that is the mother tree. And she has spread her seeds via birds eating the cherries so that there's more cherry trees scattered about the place. Those are two crab apples, but this cherry tree was a, as I call it, a bird shat seed of a cherry tree. But you can see again, it's those sideways marks, which is different from our European native or Irish native cherry tree. So I'm very pleased to have learned this and I'm passing my little bit of knowledge on to others.